Neonic Void Productions presents Hello. I'm terrible. I, as you can tell, I'm terrible at these intros. Hi, welcome to House of Ideas. I am your host, not DM. This is not my D&D podcast. Devin. And there's a cat in the background. Uh, yeah, welcome to House of Ideas, where we talk about comic book characters, comics, everything under the sun, nerdy. So, to get things going before we jump into the thick of it, in the description below, there'll be a link to a link tree that will take you to Spotify and everywhere else that all the Neonic Void podcasts are out on. You want to listen to mythology? Uh, listen to a bunch of us, a bunch of freaking nerds play D&D and the other tabletop games that podcasts are never for them. Books, movies, horror horror genre everything down there you can imagine is in that link as well as the youtube if you're on youtube hi how are you what's good what's popping please subscribe like comment all that shit share girl i would like to make a living off this help a bitch out cool so in, in today's episode introducing today's guest is the one the only Go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, the only Quinn. <laughs> My name's Quinn. Uh, or you can call me. You don't have to call me it, but like uh, I'm Xbrix on Twitter. Yep. Um. Or I mean the handles Brickheads X. It's it's weird. I want the brick the uh, handles one thing and then the name's another thing and I. I'm I'm working on it. I'm sorting it out. <laughs> So, first of all, welcome to the pod. This has been... We pushed this back, unfortunately, once. But luckily, this is not... This has only happened once. Some of my past episodes got pushed back, like, a couple of weeks. Like, when we do... When I get around to uploading the Photon episode, that took, like, a month. But luckily, I only had to push this back... Did I have to put? Yeah, we pushed this back one week, right? Um, I don't think so. I think so. Oh, no, I, th- I think it was always going to be today. Oh snap! Okay, this one was on time. It was another. <laughs> it was another one I had to push back. It was long shot. Yeah, so it was long shot. Disregard all that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm over here losing my mind. There's so many episodes in the works. So don't mind me. I'm going insane. Um. Get back on track. So my mind's at a million places. What is your comic book origin story? What got you into comics? Um, so I think it was kind of like a combination of like, um, when I was around teen was basically like when the MCU started, and then also like the Dark Knight came out, and so there was like. That was kind of like the turning point for the whole thing with like comic book movies. Like they were kind of entering sort of like a new phase and there was kind of becoming a culture around it and stuff like that. And so I wanted to figure that out and I started to get into comics and, um, you know, there were kind of some false starts. Like I tried getting into Batman a lot of the stuff that was going on then early 2010s was kind of like super edgy and I just wasn't in the mood for that and um, eventually I caught the uh, X-Men movie on AMC I was watching The Walking Dead they had an ad for it and I'm like oh yeah that's interesting because at that point the X-Men were like this kind of off limits part of Marvel I mean they were they're promoting it. They're promoting them, but they weren't promoting them at the same time. Like this was before 
uh, IVX or any of that stuff. Yeah. Like, before the kind of the period where they started to like remove the Fantastic Four and X Men and stuff from merchandise, but it right. was kind of like after they were putting Wolverine as like one of their big characters and they were starting to gear up for the Avengers and all of that kind of shifting the face of Marvel so that it was more like the MCU. But I kind of liked it because the X-Men seemed even more like underdogs at that time. They were kind of like the secret side of Marvel, even though that's kind of like crazy to imagine for anyone born like before or after a certain time because, you know, they had the whole, they were the big thing in the 90s big thing in the in a certain part of the 2000s uh, and then they're going to become the big thing again like that's already started with house effects powers of 10 kind of restoring them back to the limelight but that was kind of what started to get me interested in that also also uh visiting the islands of adventure theme park and seeing the Marvel superheroes land and seeing like the giant they've got these giant displays of like all the comic book heroes and they've got the X-Men out there and just got me really hyped about the whole thing it made me want to check them out and so I started checking out uh, Bendis's all new X-Men I got into X-Men started to check out the Claremont stuff and then what I love about Checking out X Men is it kind of feels like some kind of archaeological expedition or something where you dig up like part of something, you dig up another part of something, and you kind of start to see the whole slowly as things go by. Like, you know, you could be into X Men for two or three years before you even really know anything about like the New Mutants or Generation X or anything like that. And so it's just cool because there's always something. To discover it feels like Great. but that's that's how i got into it and i kind of mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say never stopped but i think there was like a time when i kind of slowed down a bit and then I kind of got back into it around the resurrection period where they're like okay yeah we we kind of got a lot of backlash from Kind of the push for inhumans being a thing yeah and like the comics weren't great then but it was kind of like it's kind of just the recognition that yeah we're kind of going back to the x-men and then so that kind of got me back on that train and checking out spaces online and and then powers of x uh or house house of x powers of 10 came out and that was like that oh. kind of locked me back in for certain that Jeff's Kiss some of the, my favorite X-Men stuff that's what got me back into the X-Men too is because like, I got back into um, I got into Marvel Comics back when Secret Wars was being released and I was mostly reading Avengers and there were some some X-Men titles like I read the Jean Grey story, the young Jean Grey story when she was in, in the present, the past Jean Grey when she was in the present, and then of course Phoenix Resurrection when Jean Grey came back, the first X-Men Red series with Jean right before Krakoa. Yeah. So I was reading mostly like Jean stuff, and then Krakoa happened and I'm like, oh, this shit is so good. Yeah. So I got Jonathan Hickman, just take my money. Just take yeah. all my money. I will throw money at that man. Him and Al Ewing, I will just throw money at you. Yeah. And throw then now, now we've got Ultimate Spider-Man coming up. It's like, Ugh. it's so weird to be excited about a Spider-Man comic. But... That, I'm excited for that. I'm mostly excited for the Ultimate X-Men. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just Peach, take my money. Take my money too, yeah. girl. I'm ready. Yeah. I I thought I'd never be so excited for the Ultimate Universe. Yeah. But here here I am excited about the Ultimate Universe. <laughs> yeah, I th I feel like I was talking to someone about this um, 
yesterday, but it it feels like Jonathan Hickman like used the aesthetics of the Ultimate Universe to like Trojan horse like all of these comics that people have been asking for. Yeah. Um like kind of you know, so kind of like with a fresh perspective of the X-Men and like Peter Parker being able to be older and like have a family and stuff like that. Just things that people have been wanting to see in the comics, but like that haven't been necessarily allowed. It's kind of like helped bring in like a sort of a secret way into that, you know, it's just going to be fascinating to see where all that leads. Yeah, since the whole Ultimate Universe rebooted, like how did everything? Please, please tell me the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are not still not a yeah. thing. That was weird. Yeah, yeah I would like to. I would like to just ignore that and be like, "Oh, that's a fever dream of the early 2000s. Yeah, that whole thing with the like the Mark Millar Edge, every other character being like a cannibal. Uh, that's when the Ultimate Universe kind of went over. <laughs> it's like, but a lot of that was like yeah. from the beginning. Like a lot of that was like already with like the Ultimates. Like it was just, I don't know. I think it's a they, comic that's fascinating, but not a comic that's good. Like it's no, one it's just like, well, how did we get here? Yeah. <laughs> Who approved this? Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 I will say though, the maker. Mr. Uh, Reed Richards as a villain. Yeah. I mean, okay, sorry. As a as a out villain, as a known villain, not a not cuz I'm sorry, Reed Richards. He's not a nice man. He's not. Love him. Love him dearly, but he's a dick. I like But him. the maker as like an out. I'm a I villain like, like on six purpose. 616 six, Reed Richards, I like him. I do too, but he's kind of a Sue kind of deserves better. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. In the current run, he's not so bad. No, he's cool. He's just like, you know, this autistic wife guy. Yeah. Like, he seems pretty neat. He seems pretty chill. Yeah. I, I do love me some fantastic. Anyway, before we get into Fantastic Four conversation. Because <laughs> again, I did say we was going to get sidetracked. That's what happens yeah. with me. It's not who it is. We're going to talk about Jeff. Yes, Jeffrey the Land Shark, or better known as Jeff. Yes. Jeff the Land Shark was created by Kelly Thompson and. Who was the other one? Uh, Nick. I forgot his name up here. Um, Nick. Dan- no. Daniel. Dan- Nick. Daniel. Dan- Nick. Daniel DiNicolo. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Characters and I'm like butchering his name. Butchering I'm sorry, name. ladies and gentlemen. We are butchering his name. We do not speak Italian. His name is... Your name is beautiful, sir. But if we mispronounced it, I, we're so sorry. But okay. Yeah. So those two are the creator of Jeff the Killer. And Jeff's first appearance... Jeff the Landshark. <laughs> Oh yeah, Jeff uh, the Land Shark. Yeah, we can't we can't forget that he's a Land Shark. Yeah. His first appearance was in West Coast Avengers Volume Three, Issue Seven, first shown in January 2019. So he's relatively new. He's only like, I mean, in real time, he's like four years, four years old, going on five. He's yeah. reaching his five year anniversary here soon. Yeah. Went on five, baby. Yeah, he was yeah. first introduced in the West Coast Avengers. Um, yep. And actually, fun fact, he was introduced in the sixth issue. So he's often oh, he was introduced in the sixth, sixth yeah. issue? He, like, appears in the background chasing Gwen. Oh, that's and then, cute. But then oh, you've got right, like, yeah. a whole conversation of, like, he's, like, properly introduced in the as Jeff yeah. in seven. So... Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I forgot he was in the he was in number six. But he wasn't properly like named or formally introduced until the seventh. Yeah. 
And man, his design in in that in that comic was in the beginning before he got to, he, before he got the cutesy design he has now. It it looks like way different than it does now. Yeah, which isn't a bad thing. The design was kind of cool, but it's 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 it such a, a it changed a lot between yeah. then and what we have now with Jeff. Because now I want a plush of Jeff. He looks so cute. He's always cute. He's oh yeah, most definitely. Um, but yeah, he kind of started out more like a lanky puppy, kind of mm-hmm. was being his build. Um, and then got like one or two more artists after that on West Coast Avengers, I think, and so he changes over the course of the book. Um. See, are we gonna do it like complete chronological order, or are we gonna? Oh, uh, we can do a complete chronological order, like his story on like how how he um, his appearances in West Coast Avengers, and then go into other little appearances that are kind of like cool because he he makes a lot of cameos elsewhere, ladies and gents. So yeah. he does. He's a he's a cameo. He's a cameo king. A lot yep. of the time, but the West Coast Avengers and then, of course, I think Deadpool are his main, like, ventures. And then, of course, he pops in, like, when the Gwenpool series a lot. Yeah. So, let's see. We kind of start off with the uh, West Coast Avengers. And from the first issue, that's where they established Land Sharks. Uh, the whole thing is that they're created by Brodok, who is Modok, but disguised as, like, this... Bro. Sort of bro, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Love so. Dog. Yeah, he's got this new form with like a spray tan. And he's got a. <laughs> That's so stupid. It's still slightly bigger than usual. Yeah. Not as normal, but big enough so you can be like, wait, there's something wrong with that guy. And something off here. Don't be suspicious. Yeah, it's the. Don't uh, be suspicious. Land sharks. Uh, Basically, there's these living weapons that he uses to uh, attack Venice Beach, and then he has them all under his control so he can pretend to save the day. And there's the whole plot that goes on with that, and they, they deal with him. And then later on, the West Coast Avengers run into the West Coast Masters of Evil. Uh, who are supposed Love to like, that name, by the way. Yeah. And that's when, like, Modok returns in his normal form. He's done disguising, but he's still got his land sharks. And that's when we first notice a new one, a new smaller one in the sixth issue. And by the seventh issue, Gwenpool has taken him and adopted him and named him Jeff, which is actually the same name that she gave a cat uh, a little bit earlier in the run. And He's just a little guy. Yeah, she wanted to keep the cat, and they're like, no, you can't keep the cat. So she's like, can I keep the land shark? And they're like, fine, but we'll keep him. Just make sure that he doesn't bite anyone who isn't evil. He's like, okay. And so Jeff becomes kind of like this sort of mascot. Um, Every time I've... I did an interview with Kelly Thompson. She talked about how she doesn't really consider him like a pet. He's only kind of like a pet in the sense that, like, Lockheed is kind of considered a pet in, like, an editorial sort of way, even though he's, like, got his own language and a wife and kids and stuff. Um, so basically, like, he's he's smart enough to, like, kind of know things and kind of not be a pet. Hmm. It's weird. He drinks coffee. He drinks coffee in the yeah. room. Wait, hold up. Pull the brakes. You did an interview with Kelly? Yeah. Yeah, for great gay crashers. What's your day job? I have so many questions. Oh, that's not it's not a job. It's like a volunteer thing. I don't I don't get paid. None of us get paid. Oh, oh, it's all, oh, got it. Got it. It's for a little the, bit. The the plus of that is that none of us can get fired. And <laughs> cuz like everyone's getting laid off in entertainment journalism and we're just here vibing. 
Oh, work. Because there's not any money involved. I mean, sometimes yeah. I wish there was money involved, but like, it's also like, then you have to become like this content farm and then you got to sell yourself. Yeah. And no, I get that. But you kind of threw me off with the interview. Interview with Kelly. It was, it was cool because that was like one of my bucket list things when I first started writing about comics. It's like, I want to interview Kelly Thompson about Jeff the Lamb Shark because he's my favorite guy. He's, just makes me happy, you know? He just, yeah. Like I go, his, his, yeah, little, his little grin, his little, rough. His little grin, it, and unforgiving. The world's just like this, weighing me down. And then I see this little shark. And I'm like, it's worth it. It's worth it for him. Yeah, I'll continue. I can. I can do this for Jeff. <laughs> Sorry, so, you can continue. That guy yeah. sent me for a world for a second. I'm like, what? Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm just being like, <laughs> casually being like, the reason I live is for the shark. He's, he's my whole purpose for being. Um, so anyways, Jeff on the West Coast Avengers, uh, he kind of takes a liking to Quentin Quire, who is, who basically like becomes the boyfriend of Gwenpool mm -hmm. during that run. And mm -hmm. they're kind of like, they're kind of like his parents in a regard. Yeah. Um, Quentin doesn't really like being seen as a nice guy, but he kind of has like a soft spot for this this little critter. Um, but you know, and they're they're seen together in later appearances. Um, for example, after uh, West Coast Avengers is over, and you get into Gwenpool Strikes Back, and that's it's weird because you'd think that. A lot of people expected Jeff to be in that more than he was. Yeah. I mean, kind of had cameos in that. Um, because people often associate Jeff as being a Gwenpool character, but when it comes to like Gwenpool solo comics, he kind of isn't in them very much. Uh, but Quentin's Sadly. looking after him in that. And uh, he's mostly used for like imagery for. For Gwenpool, like she's got like him on his, I mean, Gwenpool has Jeff on her phone case and it's all over and is represented by him and um, like makes up a door and that's, it's a very cute comic though, even if it doesn't have Jeff in it, it, it is a cute, cute comic on its own. Oh, I love Gwenpool's strength. Where so. Gwenpool kind of tries to find herself and eventually becomes a mutant. Whoever I can get my hands on the dude, do Gwenpool. It's it, yeah. It's gonna be a fun episode. I I love. It. Yeah, I I love Gwenpool. So if there's no one ever available, then I'd I'd do that one. I mean, you can take it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. I'll, I'll leave <laughs> it open for any anyone else who might want it. For now. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, after that, we get. No, during that actually is an important milestone. I got this down in my notes that I've got here. Um, so, a variant cover for Gwenpool Strikes Back number one is actually the first place where Ray Hiru, the uh, art duo from Japan, mm -hmm. um, they draw Jeff for the first time on that cover. And they're pretty much like the definitive Gwenpool artists. Um, so the artist on Gwenpool Strikes Back is pretty good. Uh, David Beldion, I think his last name is. Uh, but anyways, mm -hmm. Hero draws this variant cover and it's got Jeff on it. And from there, they start to draw Jeff into all their stuff because they like to do Easter eggs of the characters that they've done before. So like they do, they did the art on Unbelievable Gwenpool. So after that, they kind of snuck Gwenpool into like images and merchandise and stuff like that in their comics and same thing with like the power pack and uh from this point onwards because jeff is kind of associated with gwenpool and they're associated with gwenpool uh they start to include jeff and everything so jeff starts mm -hmm. showing up and things like power pack grow up as like a drawing that katie power drew and uh just in the background of like uh spider-man and venom 
Double Trouble, and just everything that they work on, they they hide this little guy into the background. And so they sort of slowly become Jeff artists before they're even like tied specifically to drawing him like officially yeah. uh, for any sort of project. And so we, between that, we also have a story that Kelly Thompson did uh, with Pepe Larraz on um, Marvel Comics 1000 which had a bunch of stories based on different anniversaries. And one of them was for the anniversary of Elsa Bloodstone. So yes. Kelly Thompson, who loves Elsa Bloodstone a lot and like writes her into a lot of her stuff, like Jessica Jones. And as we'll talk about later, Deadpool, um, she includes a comic where Jeff is with Elsa Bloodstone. We kind of don't know why at the time, but then we kind of it's kind of explained like retroactively, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, later on in the ne next big chapter of uh, Jeff showing up, which is Deadpool, where Gwenpool steps in and she gives Jeff to Deadpool because she's worried about not having a series at the time. She's like, oh, yeah, my series don't last for very long anymore. And so... It's a very, like, sad and existential moment where she's just like, I don't know if this little guy will get to continue to exist in comics as long as he's with me. So he needs to be with you, who has, like, this popular movie series and all these other things. Yeah. So she... Very self-aware, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. She's also... She, she breaks the fourth wall. She's kind of like... It's a, it's a whole thing. Um, in another episode, you'll probably hear about the differences between Gwenpool and Deadpool. But basically, her whole thing is that she's from the real world and she got stuck in the comic book world uh, after going over there from our world. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's her whole deal. That's how she breaks the fourth wall. And so, in those first few issues of... Deadpool, Chris Bocklo is doing the art and he redesigns Jeff so that like he only has back legs and he uses his flippers for his front legs. And it's kind of odd because it gives him like this chicken like build and <laughs> the artist who's like immediately after him starts to do that same sort of design where he's got two legs and there is a backup story though at the same time where he has more of a traditional build where he's got like four legs uh, oh by the way fun fact he's uh based kind of on kelly thompson's cats apparently oh really yeah she writes his behavior as being kind of like uh his cats and so you sort of see similarities like there's a picture that she shared forever ago of like the the cats chilling in the dishwasher and then recently there was one where jeff goes into the dishwasher yeah. and he tries to taste all the dishes yeah <laughs> so yeah there's just little little parallels like that i'm pretty sure so oh and then there's there's in the backup story it's it's really cute it's where deadpool dresses up like gwenpool uh to make Jeff happy because he misses mm. her. But they have a really cute dynamic. And he's kind of like the uncle that lets kids watch like movies that they're not supposed to and stuff like that. And... But he's like this he's like this good figure for uh for Jeff. He's very protective of him. Yeah. And also in that run, uh Elsa Bloodstone like starts to fall for him. He falls for her, and so that kind of explains why Elsa Bloodstone would be in sort of the orbit of Jeff Landshark. Yeah, because so. Deadpool has a tendency to fall for women that deal with monsters in some way, or is yes. one. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, like speaking of Jeff getting his first action figure with uh, Sheikla, the succubus. I just got saw him. that, and I'm like, yeah. I have to hunt down that figure now. Yeah. He he rescued that figure from so many GameStop uh, 
Endurance Isles. Like he yeah. he was a big selling point, I think. That kind of I could, yeah. So I'm sure everyone's like, "Oh my God, I need Jeff the Land Shark stat." Yeah, and I don't even know if he was like three years old at that point by the time he got his first action figure. But it's it's crazy. Yeah. It shows you like how he starts to have this catapulting popularity. Yeah. And every so often something happens to boost it. Yeah. And so let's see, in in the Deadpool run, there's an issue where Jeff goes to Krakoa and the artist for that. Um I have to let's see look that up here. But basically what happens is Deadpool goes to Krakoa and he Jeff is brought with him. He doesn't try to bring Jeff there, but Jeff like bites onto his ass and <laughs> goes there himself. And the artist is Kevin Labranda. Uh who draws Jeff as being a lot smaller and a lot more round, and he doesn't have the fins on the side, and he's got all four of his legs again. And basically this determines what he looks like now. This is kind of the look that like ends up sticking the most for Jeff. Yeah. So we we do get a few different looking appearances, like between when that sticks and now. Um uh, but it's sort of like the genesis of this character's look. That's something that's always interested me, like character design, characters changing over time. Like, for example, you've got Elsa Bloodstone. She looked like completely different yeah. when she debuted. Like she was like blonde and stuff like that. And then yeah. uh, Stuart Eminen uh, brought her in for uh, Next Wave. And completely redesigned her. Decided, you know, she should have red hair and have like the giant ponytail and the trench coat. And oh, he just basically a... redesigned her from scratch, and that look stuck forever. Such a good look, too. It is. I, I do miss that they didn't translate that into the MCU. That she doesn't have like that's, a pony. That's true. I do agree with that. That they didn't transfer. That they should have transferred the ponytail. But at the same time, the actress that they got to play her. Her acting yeah. as Elsa, yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'll forgive it. I'll forgive it. Yeah, and like the guy's like, oh, do you have the something? Just like, have you tried checking up your own ass? And like, that's 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 Elsa Bloodstone. Oh, it's Elsa Bloodstone. Oh, I got. I can't wait till they bring her back. Yeah, I love them. I love Werewolf by Night. the The TV special, ladies and gents. If you have not watched it, and you love the supernatural, ooky spooky part of Marvel, do yourself a favor babes watch it and also if you just like love the like, classic universal horror yes. it's like a big homage to that you know so the wolfman and dracula all that sort of stuff yes and good that. uh anyway so yeah we've, we've got that whole deadpool run going and then repeat my old self what i think i say and then a lot anyways <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so the artist who was drawing him, like Chris Bocklow, starts to change him a bit so that he yeah. has the four legs again. And also around this time, we get Yuri Hiru doing a print for a comic convention in Japan. Mm -hmm. And it's got like all the women of Marvel, it's got Squirrel Girl, it's got. Uh, Spider Gwen got Gwenpool yeah. in there, and Gwenpool's walking Jeff, and he's got his little vest, and he's got a leash and stuff like that. And that image kind of blew up a bit on the internet, and so that sort of uh, continued to solidify Ray Haru as being the Jeff artist. Mm -hmm. And before long, in 2020, uh, when things were at their bleakest, uh, Kelly Thompson announced that there was a project involving Ray Haru and Jeff, and that she was a part of that as well. And that turned out to be It's Jeff, which was Jeff's very own title. Uh, yeah. 
or Marvel Unlimited, which are these. It's this Infinity comic, which is what Marvel calls these comics that are built for a scrolling format. So you look at them on your phone and you scroll up and they continue. So sometimes we'll have like a gag where there's something like traveling down or, you know, like one of them is Jeff diving into the ocean and he kind of goes deeper yeah. and deeper as you scroll. Um, and so that's that kind of cemented him in a way, I think as this really popular character because there was just a TikTok of one of their earliest comics and it just blew up. It just was all over the internet and Jeff started appearing in like edits. Like if you've ever seen the the Blaha take care of these kids, look after these kids. Yes. Edit. But yeah. It's so cute. It's so I love it. It's adorable. But it's like he he can he just shows up in all these memes and stuff like that, and he kind of I don't know. He kind of has just become popular through them, you know. Yeah. He, and he just has growing popularity that continues. Everyone who finds out about him just goes, oh, oh my God, like, where has he been my whole life? I get to be like, yeah, is that from the beginning? I was, I was reading West Coast Avengers. Yeah. Um, I would say I liked him before he was cool, but he is always cool. He was always been great. Um, and so it's Jeff has been continuing like every kind of near the end of the year it gets a new volume so I got a volume two and then around when volume two was released they did a physical edition for volume one just called It's Jeff which was a yep. like the first 12 installments of it uh, put into an issue and then kind of formatted differently so that like the scrolling format could fit onto the pages and they did pretty good with that actually they did. Um, it was great. It's not easy to change formats. Like I've seen them do it the other way around and take comics that are Infinity Comics and try putting them into the scrolling format. And they usually just look really ugly. There's lots of like empty space and it's just they kind of hack apart the artwork to do yeah. that. But they they really did a good job in finding a way to make this very vertically styled artwork work within pages. And so they did volume one and then recently volume two came out. I old it's Jeff the Jeff verse, which is thirteen. Um all the way through the next twelve issues of that. Yeah. And then they've started doing the volume three of the Infinity Comics. Um and the first six issues of that have come out. And also since then it's Jeff has inspired a bunch of other uh, different, like, cute animal Infinity comics. So, for example, there's Alligator Loki, which he's one of those few characters that's, like, created for the MCU, but then came to the comics from there. Um, so, Alligator Loki has had a few comics, and even one where he crosses over with Jeff the Landshark. And, yeah. Uh, Jeff like wants his toy real bad and so they get into a fight and it's it's genuinely pretty hilarious um very underrated appearance of jeff and also now fuji included him in a few comics that she did for marvel meow which is about the different cats of the marvel universe there's one where loki turns into a cat and has a bit of beef with uh with jeff because he steals the ham that's meant for Lucky and Jeff. And so Lucky and Jeff team up to like get the ham back from him. It's, it's just really cute. It's very, very adorable. Jeff, basically the appeal of him is that he's a little guy. He's just, he's just a little guy. He's just doing he's his just thing. He's just a little guy. Yeah, yeah he's just mis mischievous sometimes, but he always like learns his lesson or learns to be kind by the end. I, I do love that he is able to be mischievous, though. I love that he can just, like, kind of be a little shit. He's my little <laughs> shit. He's my little guy, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I want them to release a fucking plush of this guy. 
they special merge. They started to. They did one through. What is it like? Uh, I don't even remember the name of the company. It starts with Q, though. Like they do the Q figures, the uh, mm -hmm. or vinyl figures for that. But they they did a plush, but it was like highly stylized in a way where it didn't really look like Jeff, mm -hmm. and so it didn't really take off. Um, but they still they still could do another one. I think they could do one that looks like him, and I think that would do a lot better. Like, Jeff has the workings to be in the MCU and just be one of those the MCU pets. It'd be a good marketing point. Yeah. Have a bunch yeah. of shorts, a short web series on Disney Plus with just Jeff. Yeah, or just get itself. To, yeah. Yeah, that's another part of the big appeal of it is that the it's Jeff comics are just about like the Marvel heroes hanging out a lot of the time. It's just like what they do in their off time. Yeah, it's kind of a thing that comics fans want to see, but we don't necessarily get because you know editorial is always like we got to have in the big battles, we got to have in the big important stuff, and so no one wants to see the downtime stuff. stuff. But yeah, like all of us want to see yeah. just what they do casually. And this sort of provides a chance for that. Most definitely. And then in terms of appearances, there's not much else. He gets lots of appearances as like merch and other comics, yeah. like Spider Woman, uh, Captain Marvel. In Captain Marvel, he has a brief cameo and I don't know the exact issues off the top of my head, but it's um it's set during the future, and so it shows an old version of Jeff, who's like all grizzled and kind of old looking, but he's still the same size, so he hasn't grown up at all. And that's something that I talked with Kelly about in our interview, mm -hmm. is that he's actually not a baby, even though sometimes he's labeled as baby, Jeff the Baby Landshark. He's just, yeah. he's just small. He's like, he's never going to get bigger. It's this whole thing. Like all the other he's, land sharks are like giant jaws sized and he's yeah. it's not computer. He's literally just a little guy. Yeah. That should be his ta that should be his tagline. Jeff yeah. the land shark, just a little guy. Yeah. <laughs> um let's see. Yeah, that was the future of twenty fifty one. Um was co created by Kelly Thompson and Lee Garbett. So that's one of the few multiversal Jeffs out there. Another fun one that I like with Jeff is that he was he got venomized. Oh yes, that's a that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Venomized so, Jeff is so cute. Yeah. So first time he got a symbiote was in the last issue of Deadpool, which was a King and Black tie-in. They kind of had yeah. to end it on a, on a tie-in. So basically the whole thing with those was like, you can't touch anything that's gotten a symbiote, otherwise you get the symbiote on you. And Jeff tries biting it. And he... He's all angry and wants to fight Deadpool. And so Deadpool eventually turns him back by like blasting him with music. And then... Later on in Edge of Venomverse, we get a story about Jeff somehow getting a symbiote at the park. We don't really see how he does it, but he just ends up with a symbiote and uh, Kate Bishop has to deal with it and she has to help him uh, get rid of it by taking him to a concert. And she also uses music to, to blast it away because symbiotes are weak to sound. Yeah, they hate high, they hate lots of sound. God, yeah. this was during the time of the extreme of Venomverse that they were doing some real cool shit. Yeah, that one issue with Jeff and it has so much fun stuff. There's like a Evangelion one, and there's like yeah. there's a sports one that was done by Jordan Bloom, yeah. who I've also interviewed. That was fun, where it's like it's uh, Eddie Brock is like a sports journalist and he's investigating baseball. And so there's a baseball venom. 
I do. I, like I do the, love the first like... stuff. I love it when they're just like, "What if this character was a cowboy? What if this one was like steampunk or a pirate?" Or my favorite like that. one was like uh, Venom if he attached himself to a magical girl. I was like, "Oh, yeah, that was very fun." Gold. Uh, I think there was one I was also like a priest. I was like, "Oh, this is some good shit." Yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah. So my whole idea yeah. for uh, multiversal Jeff is like, what if there's one that was like a hammerhead? <gasps> and what if that was like ultimate Jeff was just like a hammerhead land shark. And so he's basically like exactly the same, but he's got a different looking face. Oh, that would be so that'd be lit. Marvel, yeah. do it, please. Just just do it. Just make Jeff every universe be Jeff, but a different type of shark. Yeah. Have a multiverse story, the multiverse of Jeff, and it's just like Jeff meets all these different versions of him that are just different types of sharks. Yeah, that's kind of inspired by like, I don't know a lot about DC, but I do know that like they, King Shark looked a certain way, and then when they did the mm. new 52, they're just like, he's a hammerhead shark now. Yeah. It was either that or some other reboot, but somehow they made him a hammerhead shark, and then they went back on that afterwards. Yeah. He looks better as a great fight, but it, it is just funny that there's just another version of him that's a hammerhead. So it'd be funny if they did that with Jeff, too. I think it'd be a great idea to have, like, have a line of merchandise where it's, like, figures, Funkos, plush of all these different types of Jeff... They're all different shark, different types of sharks. Yeah, I think again, the money will just roll in itself. The nerds yeah. will buy it. Yeah, if they're good. Yeah, but what happens is like a lot of time they like quietly drop it. Like uh, Jeff got his first appearance as a Funko, uh, or but it's like as uh, it's like Deadpool is like standing in his mouth. So he's kind of like a, this platform for him, and he's got his jaws wide open, and Deadpool is standing in the jaws. Um, but they didn't really advertise it or anything. They didn't really promote it. But he's he's also gotten a lot of popularity from appearing in mobile games, like he appeared in uh, Marvel Puzzle Quest, and then he recently appeared in Marvel Snap. So in Marvel Snap, he has the power to just go wherever he wants. Yeah. Uh, so as he appears in more places, he gains more popularity. Yeah. Oh shit! I just I just looked on like a Funko Pop with Jeff, and I looked it up. It's Deadpool, one two nine seven Deadpool with Jeff. Games. Yeah. I need to hunt on that pop now. <laughs> yeah. And so those are all of his all of his appearances that I can think of. Yeah, Jeff is fairly new, and he's a cameo queen, as well as his Infinity. Cutesy, cute little Infinity comic. But not, but yeah, bring him into the MCU. It'll make, it'll be like, they can make a bunch of shorts for him, like they did with what's his, with Thor's roommate. Yeah. But no one, no one asked for that, but they did that anyway. It was great. They were great. But yeah. Like, you could, it, it'll write itself. Yeah. I'm hoping Jeff continues on and they actually, uh, I mean, obviously I want them to continue the Infinity comic because the stuff is just adorable, but I also kind of want him to be brought back into like a main series line and have to be like a big part of a series. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I've been I've been thinking about that too. Like where I'd kind of fit him into, into something like that. I would love to see him in, in spots you wouldn't normally see. Like put him in Doctor Strange. Yeah. Or like the X Men. Yeah. Ha have him at the Battle of Orcus, where they yeah. rain hell upon them, and just have him bite the head off of one of the guards or some shit yeah 
and MCU, I would love to have him be with Goose. Yeah. Chill with Goose. Her and her babies. Yeah. I mean... Uh, people have suggested, like, maybe if he appeared in Deadpool 3. Yeah. Which could happen. I mean, that could happen. That could be, I could see that. Because I'm bringing, they're bringing in literally everybody under the sun that's not part of the main continuity of um, the MCU. Yeah. I mean, they're bringing back Electra for God's sake. Yeah. Can you imagine if we got, like, the Fantastic Four from the 2015 movie? Because they, they were going to do that for uh, Deadpool 2. They, like, had these more comic accurate costumes and they're going to have them and, like, the thing was going to have a cigar. Fox doesn't have the thing against smoking that that yeah. Disney does. Uh, so that would have been like the last chance we would have had to have like a, one of the characters that smokes a cigar a lot. Have a cigar. At least it'll allow bad, bad guys to do it. It should allow like Kingpin to smoke again. But I don't know. I digress. I, think I would not be surprised if they did because they're literally bringing in freaking Jennifer Gardner. Play Electra. Yeah. <laughs> For yeah. God's sake, Electra of all people. Of from Dear all Double things to pull Electra from. Electra the film. All things pull from the film, Electra. Would... Of all things. Uh, I, when I heard, first heard about that and seen the images of her on the... In the... Um, on set, I was like, you know what? Anything's possible now. Yeah. So, and I mean, there's also... There have been rumors that Fantastic Four... The Jessica Alba, all th that group, yeah, a rumor to be in the Deadpool three movie. I'm just like, yeah. oh please. I mean, if anyone, if anyone can get Jessica Alba out of, I don't know if I would say she's in retirement. She hasn't been in movies in quite some time. But if you can get her out of, get her back into a movie, I think Ryan Reynolds could. Yeah. I mean, Brian Reynolds, he can work some magic. Yeah. I mean, there's also that, that freaking rumor that, um, again, side note, but there's also that rumor of uh, Taylor Swift playing Dazzler. Which a lot of people said no, but I've kind of, I don't know, I feel like, Kind of Dazzler has become like Taylor Swift over the last yeah. like decade. Yeah. Kind of just as like the modern pop star, like the modern face of pop, like the last decade. That's kind of like what Taylor Swift has been. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I think she's not people are probably worried that she's gonna be like the MCU Dazzler. No. I no, think she's gonna be the MCU Dazzler. But I think they're just kind of Going back to the older stuff, or not older stuff, but like, I don't know, just the stuff from before for multiverse stuff. And then they're going to probably eventually like get their own X Men cast, I hope. I don't yeah. know. I kind of don't want them to have like Kelsey Graham or Bee Beast forever. And I, I kind of feel like you got to do a lot of recasting for a lot of the characters. Yeah, I think they're, I think they. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. I, I guess it just depends on how they're going to do it. Because yeah. if they bring in. I know we're going sidetrack, ladies and gents, but we went over all the Jeff the Killer stuff. Not Jeff the Killer. Oh my God. No. Jeff the Land Shark. That's why I said Jeff the Land Shark earlier, because you said that. You said yeah, Je Jeff the Killer. I said it. Oh God. Jeff the Killer. Creep passes around my mind. Wrong podcast. Wrong show. Oh God. Uh, Jeff the Land Shark. Not Jeff. The killer. God. Um. We're talking about random shit now. So, uh, I don't. I don't know how. I, I'm going to be rather interested to see how they figure out how to do the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Fantastic Four. I mean, I've heard ideas and rumors of like they were going to plan like, oh, this Fantastic Four were a group in the '60s and they somehow got taken out of time and they came back and it's modern day like a captain 
America situation. I'm like, that could work with the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Now, the mutants and the X-Men, that's going to be more difficult to try to figure out. They've been here the whole time. How? Unless they do, wasn't there like a storyline that like Xavier wiped the world's mind that mutants and the like, the X Men even existed, and they were just hiding out in plain sight? Um, no I don't know. I mean, them. a lot of people have theorized that for the MCU. Um, I think it'd be interesting though if they were kind of just always there in yeah. a way. Um. Like that they're erased from history books and stuff like that. Not actively erased, but just like as a culture. I don't know. Hide. Yeah. Yeah. Then like I mean, like that'd be an interesting way to bring in Krakoa. That they're already on Krakoa and they've been there for a while. Yeah, I don't Hiding I don't out. want the comics to go back to the mansion, but I feel like that's gonna happen anyways. I don't think they could. Again, another side tangent. I don't think they could go back to the I don't think they're gonna go back to the mansion. At this point, yeah. you really can't. I don't. I don't think it would make sense. It'd be such a weird. At this, uh, honestly, I would leave the planet after after this shenanigans and what happened. Depending on what happens with the rise of the powers of ten and the fall of the House of X, depending on what happens in those comics, I would just leave the planet. I'd like fuck y'all and just go to Mars. <laughs> Yeah. Go to, go to Rocco. Yeah. That seems the only place left that they could possibly go to is just a Rocco. Completely leave planet. And then that yeah. could also go into like a cool event of like Earth versus a Rocco. That could be fun. Because yeah. that would lead into other conflicts and shit. Because Earth would lose a good chunk of their population if everyone if all the mutants just got up and left. Yeah. I can't see them going back to them. Because it'd just be a target on their back. Yeah. I think it'd be just be asking for them to get wiped out and nuked or something. I'm trying to think. Rather interested to see what. I'm trying to think what kind of teams Jeff could appear on. Ooh. ooh I always um, thought it'd be funny if they did a uh, a new next wave. Like, have you read Next Wave? Next Wave? All? I haven't even heard of it. Next Wave. Next Wave. The, the one with Elsa Bloodstone and Monica Rambo and Sheen Man. Oh, okay. The Agents of Hate. Got it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know. I always thought it would be fun to like do a revival that with new random characters from just all around and like Jeff could be a part of that. I would kind love like. That. The first one had, uh, the original one had Dirk Anchor, who was like a Nick Fury stand in. And yeah. so, like, they could do, he died, but they could do, like, a Dirk Anger Jr., who looks like Samuel L. Jackson. Of course. Like, you and, like, should. The, like, he you would. Like, he could be, like, the new Dirk Anger. Yes. He's like, yeah, he had a secret son the whole time. And it'd just be, like, continuing to copy Nick Fury. It'd be, yeah, it'd be a funny little gag, Nick Fury. Yeah, exactly. That'd be great. <laughs> And Jeff is just a little mascot for for them. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah, they need they do need to bring back the or next move. Yeah, that'd be a good place to put them there. Or um, honestly, the Midnight Suns if they bring them back again after. I mean, not outside the the little small run they had currently. Yeah. But, like, if they brought them back again as more of an ongoing series than just a little event they thing. Need, they need Elsa Bloodstone on a ongoing Midnight Suns, I think. Do. They I think she's do. technically part of the team, but, like, I don't like that they skipped out on having her in the video game. Like, that would have been really cool if she was in there. I feel like... Because she was in... Ultimate Alliance. That was like yeah. one of the first places she was in Ultimate Alliance 3. Yeah. I mean. I'm I guess, so 
just... I guess uh, there's an optional piece of dialogue where Deadpool mentions Jeff and Midnight Suns, but I've never run into it. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah. I'm so mad. Again, to add time, I can go on a rant for hours about Marvel's Midnight Suns game. Because I'm one of these little weirdos that has a Nintendo Switch. And I was like, oh my god, please release on Nintendo Switch. And then it got canceled. And I was so like. <laughs> That's all I'm I wanted. Sorry. That's all I wanted. All I wanted. The Switch version. So I could take it with me. And now I'm just like, well, shit. I have an Xbox or a computer. I could play it on there, I guess. Whatever. Y'all don't yeah. love me. You can do that. <laughs> But no, bring back the the Night Suns comic or like, wasn't Alt wasn't they did a Werewolf by Night one off? Yeah, that year. was that was really good. I reviewed that. Yes, oh, so good. Marvel needs to go back into like the horror side of things. I know they're they've been slowly doing it with like Halloween stuff, like the of uh, the crypt. Oh god, what was that series called? They've been released like one every year. Um, the Tales of the Crypt. Was that Tales of the Crypt? Was that? I don't know if that's Marvel. I think that's. Well, no, maybe. Uh, I'm gonna look it up. I won't get the proper name for it because I, I don't think it's Tales of the Crypt. But Crypt said its name. Crypt of Shadows. Yeah. They've been released. They've been releasing one like every year for the last couple of years, and it's just like make an ongoing of Crypt of Shadows. That yeah, would be lit. Give us the horror. Bring back Man Thing. Constantly, yeah. like these are characters that they're not utilizing, and I know they're trying to get interest into them. Hence, why they're doing all these little one-offs that they're releasing like, every October. And of course, with the whole Crypt of Shadows and then the Werewolf by Night and bring in Elsa Bloodstone and like the Deadpool series and a few other things. They're they're like they're and of course the Blade series, which if any of y'all have not read that, do yourself a favor. It's good. Like they're they want it seems like they want to see if everyone has interest and like I don't know if people care. <laughs> because I do. I love the horror side of Marvel. That shit is my is like my bread and butter. Like the um again, they were kind of taunt they're kind of teasing it with us too with the whole uh Incredible Hulk run currently going on. The first, I think it was like the first four or five issues. I don't know if they're I haven't caught up, so I don't know if they are continuing on with the mother of monsters story. Yeah. But that shit was creepy. Like, oh, uh, yes, give us the horror. Yeah. The cause, the, the, the and yes, then monsters. X-Men looks like it's going to be all kinds of body horror. The what? Sort of stuff. Uh, Ultimate X-Men. Oh, yes, exactly. Like from the previews, like she like pulls the armor like out of her, out of her head. Like it's there. And they look like, and they're doing it on purpose. It's, I think they're trying to gauge the gauge of the room, but like there are people here that are wanting it, that have been wanting it. Yeah, just give it to us. Yep. Also, Bloodstone deserves her own series. Yeah. Period. Where's Dracula? What? Ha why haven't we seen any more stuff since the Exterminators series? Yeah. Mini series. That was good. I want more of that. So good. I scratched that. I'm lying to myself. I totally forgot. They are doing that vampire event thing next year for Marvel. And that shit looks good. Yeah. I shouldn't say that. Dracula is probably going to be a big part in that. So, you know, at least they're trying. They're trying now. I take yeah. back what I said. Y'all y'all are listening. Y'all. It's there. So I just remembered. I just remembered the image that they released about the heroes fighting vampire that shit looks lit more yeah. of that put Jeff in there yeah Jeff is ooky spooky 
You know? You can be Yuki Spooky. Yeah, put, put, a, put a little... That, that, oh, vampire. Oh, God. There better be a variant cover of a vampire, Jeff. I would die. He's already got, like, his little his little teeth. Isn't, that was isn't a there... Very an... hairy, made sure to do give him, like, two little teeth felt like hanging out when his mouth was closed. Isn't there an image or, or a... Not a cover, but, like, a, a panel or something where he's, like, in a Halloween costume? Because I know there's one somewhere of, like, him in a... Goat. Yeah, that was that was in the second volume of the series. That was uh, issue here. Uh, it is past twelve. It's like I don't know, yeah. thirteen or fourteen or something like that. Okay, cool. So I'm not tripping. Good. I'm not crazy. But, but yeah, it's, no, it's, it's him trying on all the different costumes and then yes. like, they accidentally end up looking kind of creepy. And then so he ends up wearing a shark costume. Over That's his right. Regular, regular shark body. This is very, yes. he's very proud of himself. Oh, and then the one where he like, it, he just goes on all these fun adventures. Like there's one where he accidentally drinks like a shrinking serum and then he gets scared <laughs> off by a giant ant. And then so he accidentally gets the giant serum and breaks Avengers Tower in half. Yes. Um, oh, another fun fact. There's one where uh, Jeff draws pictures of himself and they're kind mm -hmm. of like childish looking. Apparently, like, the penciler for Guri Hiru did that with her left hand. because She's, like, Ooh. dominantly right-handed. Uh, so... Work. She basically did that by, like, she switched hands, kind of, so that it would look a bit more uneven. Stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, yeah, just like do, do like a whole month or like of like Jeff variant covers to get people interested in Jeff again. If they, if people even lost interest, cause obviously he has his fans out there. I mean, we're here talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> but. God, it's if you could bring back Howard the Duck and give him a new ongoing or a mini. I can, I don't know if it's ongoing or a mini, but he has like a new number one that came out last week at the time of the recording is recording. Yeah. If you could bring back Howard the freaking duck when no one's talking about Howard the duck at all. Come on. Well, I mean, enough people were talking that like that's where uh, Gwen Poole started to get her first. She's interesting because she started as like a variant cover. Yes, of Gwen. Uh, one of those Gwen back. variants. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then she then she got like a couple one shots, a Christmas one shot, which I have a bunch of those. I was hardcore about Gwen Pool. Yeah, she's she's really cool. Yeah. So good. Jeff, put him in everything. Zombie yeah. Marvel zombies, zombie Jeff. Make a zombie cool. Jeff. I think it'd be the cutest little guy. thing. But like that did that actually was like one of the Kuri Huru did a uh, spooky Jeff or not a whole Jeff variant, but they did a spooky variant for Power Pack. And one of the things had like a picture of Jeff where he was like cut in half and he was <gasps> dead. And I'm like, no. No, then, not like, Jeff. And then they revealed that like they changed it a little so that like the title was obscuring him, and um, then they were built, they weren't going to do the cover at all because it had been canceled because of COVID. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was like a whole thing, and like I feel like I was the only one who like archived all of it. This was like, yeah, this is the different dates of that cover that never ended up coming out. Yeah. Oh, those times. Yeah, weird time of comics and during COVID, if they were going to survive or not. And the misorder of shit, release order of stuff that came out before. It, 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 yeah, that's a weird time, y'all. If y'all remember, y'all were there. In the thick of it. Yep. Um, I think this is a good. Any final words on Jeff? The land shark. Uh, read it's Jeff on on Marvel Unlimited. 
and uh, support the boy. Support Jeff is, the Jeff boy. is people too. Hashtag Jeff is people too. Um, oh my god, that's gonna be the hashtag for when I when I post this episode. Yeah. <laughs> when I put it on Twitter, <laughs> hashtag. Well, oh, that's that's kind of like his tag because like that was one of the Quentin Choir shirts they wore in West yes. Coast Avengers. Like one of the last ones he had was Jeff is people too. And so that's become a hashtag on Twitter. As the thing he's associated with, but uh, you can find me on Twitter under <laughs> um at Brickheads X. Yep. I think that's correct. One. Yeah, at Brickheads X. And uh, I used to do like a bunch of. Like custom Lego builds and stuff for that for different characters from X Men, but like my computer has been being weird, so I haven't done that as much. And it's mostly just like shit posting and stuff like that. But yeah. Anything else you like to plug? Any projects or anything you're you're part of? You want to? Oh, uh, you can also find me on gate crashers which is this website where we review comics and stuff like that on the marvel editor and i also write stuff there uh, that's where we've got the interview with kelly thompson that i did um so that's exciting stuff you can find out all the secrets of of jeff there and the link to that will be in the description below yeah of this we'll episode. add that in there yeah. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of good stuff. We just talk about like everything, and we've got all kinds of reviews and retrospectives and stuff like that. I've got a big thing on there about um just trivia about Jeff about how about him like not technically being a baby and kind of like where they explored that in the comics and various militia, but very various pieces of uh. Yeah, there. Yeah. Mark. Again, the description, the links to all those will be in the description below if you want to look further. If you want to follow him on Twitter or look further into the knowledge of Jeff through that article and that interview. So, thank you, Ben, for joining me today talking about Jeff the Land Shark. Oh, thank and you. Again, I could set. Gwen pull aside. I mean, I'll probably cut this part out, but we could probably plan that in like sometime like January, February. So we, so yeah. It's not gonna be anytime soon. It could be a, it could be it'd be like a month or so. But yeah. you're more than welcome to take to take on Gwen Pool, because love her. She's one of the ones on my personal list that I want to do an episode on. So if I get I can get a guest for yeah. Give me a reason to reread all her stuff too, because I, I, I love her runs so good. Yeah. But yes, thank you all for listening to today's episode. Catch us next time. Well, catch me next time with a new guest talking about a different comic book character. Until then, peace out.